Thank you, Monica. I really uh, appreciate you um, being here. It's a great pleasure and honor to have you, and I know it was an effort to get here. Um, I know you also know, Monica, just how um, very special you were to Mark. You were one of his very favorites, and um, he was always so proud of you. Um, I, don't, I don't think there's very many people in this world that are more passionate about the game of tennis than Mark was. However, looking around, Peggy Willard and her husband Ed uh, would be right up there, and congratulations to you, Peggy and Ed, for the um, dedication this morning and the wonderful contribution you've made to the enshrinement room. Thank you for making that possible. Mark loved to watch tennis. He would uh, really enjoy being on the center courts around the, around the world, uh, watching the best players in the world play, many of whom were his clients. And he, he loved to see what strategy was going on and the psychological battles that were taking place. And one of his favorite things to say quite often was, this is the most important point of the match. And he was often right. And it was uncanny how many times he was right uh, in predicting double faults. But not only was he a great fan of the game, he really did love to play the game. He would travel everywhere with his one tennis racket and his Bjorn Borg towel. And he made great efforts to um, rise early and get on the court for a best of three set doubles match at 7 a.m. in the morning. He loved it when uh, at Grand Slam tournaments, he'd be there for two weeks, so he got to play several times. And he'd make calls to, to coaches or to friends or pros who were uh, maybe out of the tournament or only playing doubles and be very hard to say no to Mark. So they would show up and play at 7 a.m. and Mark would get his tennis in before his day began. He, um, I think he would gladly give up his seat at Wimbledon at, or a seat at the French Open any time to, um, to go out and watch uh, someone that he knew quite well. And it would be someone like a Paul Kildary who might be playing um, out on court 16 and Mark would gladly leave the seat uh, at the French Open where he could, literally could reach over and touch a player and go out and watch his friend Paul play. It didn't matter if it was doubles or, or singles. He truly loved that. And um, he, he would take his camera and his briefcase and a three by five card and jot down a couple of notes that he thought Paul might be interested in knowing for a future match. Um, and Paul was always grateful as were others that Mark showed such great support. Um, I think what Mark loved doing more than anything, a uh, place he loved to go to was the IMG Academies, better known as the Nick Boletari Tennis Academy. And um, he spent many, 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 many days there and loved being there. And Nick is here with us today. He, he couldn't wait to have dinner with Nick and find out who was at the academy and what young up-and-comers were, were uh, that he needed to know about. And he'd, get, again, get his 3 by 5 card out and write down the names Maria or Yelena or Tatiana. And um, he would check their progress uh, throughout the, the months and years. And we all know what, what those three have achieved. Mark, um, he, he loved, I, I mentioned he loved playing. But what he really was so proud of was this game that he invented. Um, many of you have played against Mark in this game. I, I know, Rodrigo, you're here. And you've probably played this game more than anybody against Mark. And um, it was um, kind of his version of handicapping tennis. It, the, the rules were very simple. There were only three. You, uh, the opponent got one serve, um, had to hit the ball within Mark's reach, and you could not lob. <laughs> and um, most people would step on the court very gingerly and think that they wouldn't have to try very hard. And it'd be over in a few minutes, 15, 20 at the most. Well, they'd get down three love and realize that they really needed to try because Mark had great hands, great reflexes, and he figured out that if he served from the far right side of the court and got to the net as quickly as he could, hit the volley cross court, it made the, it made the angle impossible for his opponent. And I remember one such match at our home in Orlando against 15-year-old Maria Sharapova, who had already made, was making quite a name for herself, and she thought she was over for a quiet weekend and a getaway from tennis and enjoy swimming or something, and Mark got her on the court for what Maria hoped to be a, a quick half an hour. Um, well, she got down three love and realized that she was in a real battle. And some 45 minutes later, at five all, um, an argument developed, uh, a large argument about whether the ball was in Mark's reach or not. And um, well, Mark did win the argument. Um, and eventually, Maria did win the set. 
Uh, you would have thought it was a Wimbledon title, the way she was fighting for this win. And Mark, uh, you know, only Mark, the owner of the company, arguing with a 15-year-old who's the future of his company, but Mark really did like to win. We um, have so many wonderful memories of opening up our home um, to anybody that had a tennis racket and had a, had a love for the game. We had countless times where kids from the academy, my brother Jimmy would bring them over, and we'd have um, some friends of mine off the tour would come with their friends, and it didn't matter what level of play it was, it didn't matter who it was, everybody was welcome. Um, we had many tennis festivals at our house over Christmas time, and Breck and Leslie and Todd all participated. Um, Mark used to love to make those draws, and he um, always picked himself a very good partner, and he won many of those festivals. I don't, I'm sure I never won any, um, but it was very important to uh, open up our home, and often strangers, complete strangers, would, would come and leave long, long-time friends. And that's really what this day is all about. I mean, as much as Mark loved watching tennis and as much as he loved to play the game, what really mattered the most to him and what he really took great value in were the people and the friendships and the relationships that came from this game. Uh, Mark valued them so much. We put a tournament on at Kapalua for 17 years where some truly wonderful long-term friendships uh, started and continue today. I know Mr. Morita is here um, flies back to Tokyo tomorrow. Um, he knows better than anybody because he participated in many of these Kapalua events. And I appreciate you making the effort to come. The thing that Mark, I think, enjoyed doing more than anything in his life was taking out his calendar and planning out the next two, three, four, six months sometimes in advance about where he was going to be and how seriously he took uh, connecting with his friends. He'd make lists of people that were going to be in the cities he was, that we were going to be in and people that he wanted to get to know better, people that we already knew. And he truly dedicated himself to maintaining and nurturing his friendships. And as much as I resisted that calendar and schedule at times, I know I am so blessed by the friendships that uh, Mark made in this game and from this game. And um, I know nothing would make Mark happier in this world on this day to have this great honor bestowed upon him. And, I'm uh, so pleased to be able to accept it on his behalf, and I thank all of, all of you that made that happen. Thank you. We got something for you. Yeah. Bessie, congratulations. At this time, it's a pleasure to present you with Mark's Enshrinement Certificate. Congratulations to you and your family. Thanks so much. All the best. Congratulations.